we will be discussing about the revolution, organic revolution. Still now, what we were discussing about the rest, the molecular basis of inheritance. So then the principles of inheritance we have studied in the first unit, first chapter, molecular basis of inheritance we have studied. Now we are going to study about evolution. See, what is the definition of evolution? It's a branch of biology which means to be descent of organisms. Okay? So, or you can instead call it a study of history of life forms on a, or living organisms on a study of history of living organisms on a, we are not talking about dinosaurs, we are talking about living organisms or it is a study of descent of organisms from generation to generation. That is what is evolutionary biology. Now if you have to understand how did life evolve, origin of life, then you have to understand origin of earth. If you have to understand origin of earth, you have to understand origin of universe. See, from long ages, from when man became conscious, there was Pragnavanta, all those Krishna in Now, yet what do we do? Some questions are still now not answered. Which came first? Egg or egg? So, many such questions are there. There are many, there are many life forms which have been described on the basis of mythology. If you look into Christianity, they talk about seven days creation. First day life was created and other things happened. The first man and woman were Adam and Eve. Even in our mythologies, we have the uh, uh, first man and first woman concept. There is a God who created Brahma, Krishna Karta, Nasha Karta is in Shiva, and uh, one who is going to preserve is Vishnu. Even if you have a whole story, if you go to each and every African tribe in Africa, they all have a story of how life is about. But all these have mythologies, it is based on faith. If you have a story about how we have a complete Vaitanic world But we have evidences, fossil evidences here. We'll be discussing about that later on, about natural selection and evidences. So if you are going on, simple way of not studying this topic is just saying that life has been created. But scientific basis certainly, if you are going to understand about that, you have to study. If you are in search of origin of life, you have to go in search of origin of earth. You have to go in search of origin of universe. Okay? All these three are required. So when you are going to study about origin of life, so the origin of universe also, what you have to understand is, there are stellar distances. In between stars, the distances we call it as stellar distances. We don't measure in normal time, seconds, minutes, I will ask or day or years. We use light here. So light, velocity of light is very, very high. And that's the reason you see uh, light in first and then here in time. Because velocity of light is higher than velocity of sun. So velocity of light speed and the both Varsha and Travel Master, we call it as light here. So now what you might have seen today you go and observe in the sky and you see the light, stars, light. It might have taken millions of years, light years to reach you. If you ask star, it has been millions of years it has taken to travel and be visible on your eyes. So whenever you are looking into star, what you should remember is it is a fast part of it as well as what you will do. So I will tell yes, I will feeding into the past. When you are observing the star light at present, you are going to be the star light. It has taken millions of years to reach you. So it is nothing but feeding into the past. So according to this origin of the universe, there was a big bang. The universe was, there was a big explosion, a bang happened. And the universe started expanding. 
the recognition of stars. And all these stars, some objects they reward and rotate it on their own axis and reward. We call them as planets. And all the planets, some objects, rock and the earth and earth. Rock and the strange rock. You might have watched the video also. Okay? So they are rotating and revolving around the planet. What is the difference between a planet and a star? Star produces its own light. They are undergoing thermonuclear fusion. There is hydrogen is going to form the helium. You know about that. So they are generating light. Planets cannot generate light, but they are found revolving around stars. So when you define a planet, any object, if they are smaller objects that are revolving and around the star, we call them as asteroids. Okay? That is different. But a large rock, chunk of rock, we call them as planets like Earth. They are rotating around the uh, revolving around the sun, a star we call them as planet. He deflations it. He number solar system, there are so many planets, but light exists only on Earth, as of now. Intelligent light which can explore the other planets. We have already watched Evo and Mom. Vishal Mangal. So, all those are, we are going there. There are no alien life in mind around as of now. Only when we explore, we will be able to know that. So all these are happening. This is about the universe. It's a very vast thing, universe. Solar system is one of the products of this big bang. And Earth was a ball of fire for thousands of years. And primitive Earth, they did not have oxygen. They had gases like, we call it as reduced atmosphere. Primitive Earth is reduced atmosphere because of the absence of oxygen. What were the gases that were present in the primitive atmosphere? Methane, ammonia, water vapor, hydrogen gas. Water, in presence of UV rays from the sun, there was no boson layer at that part of time. So water split to form hydrogen and oxygen. So I have written that reaction in UV rays, water split to form hydrogen and oxygen. Oxygen combined with hydrogen compounds to form water molecules, carbon dioxide. And other things like that. So primitive earth was reduced atmosphere. There was no oxygen. Still the appearance of plant forms or still the appearance of photosynthesis. Once that started happening, now we have oxidized atmosphere. Oxygen is nearly 21% in our present atmosphere. So but primitive earth was not having oxygen. That we should remember. Okay. So that is what are this certain aspects of it. So the history of the universe, if you look into the age and years, the age of the universe, the universe is 20 billion years old. If you don't believe in that, count it and then take it back to okay, 20 billion years old. Billion. What is 1 billion equals to 10 lakhs? 1 billion equals to 100 billion. And 4.5 billion years ago, and 3 billion years ago, life will be done. As for my life, we are talking about the universe. There is no beginning and end for the universe. We are even of travel time. We don't have that capability to travel in light years. Light years and travel time will be now more. Manishra here, you will be ash. Not ash, but you Universe is 20 billion years ago, Earth is 4.5 billion years ago, it was formed, and life started forming by 4 billion years ago. Can you take it of the scale of this? 4.6 or 9? 4 billion years ago. Okay. Now there are various theories to define, that is how many big bang theories are there. We have come to an assumption. Various theories are there to describe about origin of life. One of the important theories still will be there is theory of special creation. There is a creator who has created it. But the theory of special creation, as I told you, different communities, even in uh, Islam it is Adam and Eve, even in Christianity it is Adam and Eve, Namal Mandala and some other theories of so those are all mythologies in the first man, first woman. The theory of special creation, 
Prakara. They say that living organisms are created. It is not evolution. They are created by the life. There is an intelligent life. That we call it as God. God has created everything. According to special creation. Diversity remains the same. The Bhumi Shura is in the room. He stayed. Impossible evidence is for Gela Matarala, diagnosis. So, according to this, diversity remains the same. And according to this uh, special creation theory, whether it is Hinduism, Christianity, or Islam, they say that life began around 4000 years ago. This is the special creation theory assumptions. As per many mythologies and religious beliefs. Okay. Now, there are other scientists who have put forth other theories for saying life has arose. There is one concept called as transpermia or cosmosoma theory. According to this transpermia theory, life came, we are all aliens as per them. So the spores of life was present on the meteors that crashed on Earth, the comets that might have fallen on Earth. So it might have come from an alien spores. Spores in Bodo and Odo, there is a concept. So we might have come from other planets or asteroids which are like we might have lived here and unicellular organisms, but they follow and they might have come. In five times there has been destruction of all the life forms, new life forms has well. arise. So some of them are going to believe that so it was remote that new things were done by these areas. If you explain generally the kind of uh, unexplained things, they say that these were all land space of aliens in the belief say. There are a lot of such hypotheses with their own evidences for them. But according to facts that we are cosmos or theory, even many astronomers believe that they might have been intelligent life elsewhere. They might have, we might have been the experimental lab, or might have been the experimental lab according to them. Okay. So probably we are all aliens as per this, facts that we are theory. Theory of facts that we are or cosmos or theory. Then abiogenesis, abiogenesis of spontaneous theory. This was put forth by Aristotle and other Greek philosophers. According to them, there is a recipe for formation of life. Me me brought na kodiya that prepare jiva varne. From non-living things, living things come. From accumulation of dirt, from decaying things, life arises. Life comes from non-living things, a biogenesis theory or spontaneous generation. There are many times your mother might have scored, scolded it. If you don't wash your hair frequently, the dirt will lead to the formation of lice. That is a lie. Accumulation of dirt will lead to the formation of lice. Rain one thing. Lice. That is a lie. So these are all spontaneous theory. Life comes from non-living things. A biogenesis theory, or it was called as spontaneous theory, as put forth by Aristotle and many of the prominent Greek philosophers. Then there were many experiments conducted to disprove a biogenesis theory. He mud in the polio, mud in the decaying substances in the jiva barathe, and all that. Disprove mud in the They did many experiments. Francisco Reddy. Balancing the experiment, they are all not there for your uh, theory, I am not explaining that. But for me, it might be required. Louis Pasteur experiment is there, where Louis Pasteur, he conducted an experiment to show that he did a swine neck flask experiment. Again. He took this swine neck flask experiment. He had a broad. What is an open flask? This flask has a swine neck with opening. So they can get oxygen 
And this were all heated before it was kept in a swine flask. The main broth or whatever we kept solutions, nutrients. Okay. And they were heated to keep the pre existing spores and other things. So now we left it for many days in open air and when we took this content and uh, check it, there were no life forms, microscopic life forms were there. Open and pretty much at the lake, there were backwards and other things formed. The open flask, where this is this sort of flask. So what it led to uh, confusion is oxygen was provided, light was there. But light comes from the existing light. When butterfly comes from it, and both in there are knowledge, both in there they are under the impression it comes from during rainy season, mud blow, and the lower time. Or decaying bodies in the maggots, or the angles of insects, we call it as maggots. So they are all of that assumption, they were having that. So this one net flask experiment of English capture was a death knell for the A biogenesis theory. After this experiment, Light comes from pre-existing light. Light comes from pre-existing light. That is biogenesis. Okay. So this is the theory that is most accepted theory. But later, AI O'Barrett, a biologist and Russian scientist, Alte, they put forth a theory. Origin of life and the Bukhe Maritel, AI O'Barrett. Where it states that life has arisen from simple chemical compounds. They have formed a, the zephyra was the ocean was primitive block of life. Oceans of life are arisen from the chemical evolution. They are not materialistic here. From simple chemicals, complex chemicals form, and they are formed life. For that, this AI opened an origin of life. Origin of species by natural selection was written by Darwin. Origin of life was written by AI opened. I will then take for this. A book on chemical evolution theory or evolution theory. Okay. First self replicating metabolic capsule of life are those emotions. That is the belief. Okay. So the first cellular life form was 2000 million years ago. Cellular life form. In the viruses are very cellular, is it? What do they have? Two chemicals. What are those chemicals? Proteins and nucleotides. So, first cellular form of life we find at 2000 million years ago. So, now the materialistic or chemical evolution theory was proved by Stanley Miller, who prepared an apparatus, he called it as Stanley Miller's apparatus. So, he replicated the primitive atmosphere. The flask of the oxygen air bottle, air bottle. See, he removes the, all the air from this apparatus through the vacuum pump. So they have one region of the flask as water. Okay, water is there. After the complete setup, he removes the vacuum. Uh, through vacuum, he removes the air that is present there. And in this chamber, there are gases. What are the gases? Primitive atmosphere, little the gases. Methane, ammonia, water vapor, hydrogen gas. It is there. And during the uh, cooling down of Earth, billions of years, thousands of years, there was a continuous rain. Little drops of water in a mighty ocean provided a rain for thousands of years. All the calories and depression were provided by water. They formed oceans, seas, rivers, lakes. So it was a hot wall of fire after the big bang there, isn't it? Then this, they started slowly cooling down. It took thousands of years for them to cool down. Once they started cooling down, water went from, they converted the radiant down as rains. Torrential rains there. They, they rained for thousands of years. One day on moon hour to uh Satan or whatever they are even summer there. It would have become the summer rains. That is how we can decide. Just imagine thousands of years of rain. That is how they can decide. So, in this replication of primitive atmosphere, no oxygen, only primitive atmosphere, and gases, methane, ammonia, water, 
and when there was rain, there was lightning. UV rays was there because no ozone layer was formed. UV rays, as I told you, they break water into hydrogen and oxygen gas. Now it's the source of energy for them. You know there are two types of chemical reactions: exothermic, endothermic. Exothermic reactions create heat. Endothermic they create heat. They didn't work here. So early reactions were all endothermic. They required energy. Where did it come from? UV rays. It came from lightning. So they replicated lightning rods and then they gave by the red tungsten rods. These are tungsten rods which generate the electric sparks. And you can have spark discharge shape on the collector. They create a similar to lightning sparks have been created by this tungsten rods. So now the gases in this energy they are going to combine. If in the heat for the again are there, water will be coming here as water vapor. There is water vapor, methane gas, hydrogen gas, ammonia. In this energy, you know that water breaks down to oxygen, hydrogen, they combine with them. And they pass this gaseous form, it passes through condenser. Condenser will be water entry, water exchange. Condenser is cooling jacket. So the gaseous form, the steam and the water, they get for they form water droplets. See, water droplets I can collect that. This is called as u trap. The water droplets collect here as u trap. And you take this solution after a few days, if you take this solution and analyze for the chemicals, they have found nitrogenous bases, they have found sugars like ribose, deoxyribose, nitrogenous bases, formation of amino acids. So what is DNA? Sugar plus nitrogenous base plus phosphate group. You will have form a delay. So they came to a conclusion, this is how in the primitive oceans, which was primitive drop of life, life some have our ocean. So from all this physical energy, there is no intelligent life according to this. It has all happened because of physical factors. According to chemical evolution theory, initially evolution of life was by abiogenesis, later it is biogenesis. Initial evolution of life is by a biogenesis because from chemicals are all non living things. Once they form DNA and other things, they became living. From living, living to okay. okay. So from A biogenesis to biogenesis theory. That is what materialistic theory or chemical evolution theory considers about origin of life. So initially they might have been primitive form of life, protobiotic cell. Then they evolved to form plant forms. Plant cells are like an oxygen liberate part of the sugar. Plant cells are like they might be unicellular plants. Yet the hypothesis is now the evidences are not based on fossil evidences and other things we are discussing about. We don't, we don't even know what is the color of dinosaur skin because what fossils we get is only the skeletal framework. All that you see in Jurassic Park are imaginary colors. We do not know exactly what color skin they had, but we do know what size they were, whether they were herbivore or carnivore, even other way. So these are things I think that you should understand about how life has evolved as per the most accepted theory for evolution of life was materialistic theory or chemical evolution theory put forth by AI O'Hare and Halde. I stand in that for the Sakharaja case Nobel Prize. They replicated the primitive atmosphere. And the solution that was taken from this new trap, when they analyzed it, they found amino acids, they found uh, sugars, they found nitrogenous bases. So, which are all raw materials for formation of DNA, light. Right? So, that is about the spark discharge chamber or Miller's spark discharge chamber.